Thank you.
you and you may be seated. Let me first of all take this opportunity to say to this family that although this is a sad occasion, we the shallow church are honored that we have the privilege of serving you today. And it is our goal to serve you as best we possibly can. We want to offer you five star service today, not four, but five star service today. We want to do everything that we can to make this as easy as possible for you today so that this will be a, an experience that when you leave here, uh, you can say it was rough, but we made it through and that the church made it a lot better for us. We want you to know that you are covered by our prayers. So we have come to celebrate the life of our brother, Robert O. Andrews, a man that is so well thought of by so many people. I mean, so many people. Uh, when it hit the shallow webpage that his service would be here, it is just amazing how many phone calls I received that we are related to him. We grew up with him. And I want you to know that we have an outpour of love for you today, uh, Shayla and family from the Shiloh Church. Before you, you will find a printed program, many of you have, and we will be following that program. Uh, we will have music that will come from our musician. Then we will have the reading of the Old Testament and the New Testament as programmed, and then a prayer of comfort from the Reverend Lee Armstrong as well and then a solo from, past, from Reverend Armstrong. And then words of comfort, like consolation, will come from uh, Reverend Samuel Andrews. Following that, we will uh, have music, and then we will have some tributes. When you do your tributes, your tributes, uh, you can choose. You can either come to the upper level if you choose to do it, or if the stairs by any chance might be a challenge for you, you can do it at the lower level. Uh, and then uh, you can, after those tributes, we'll have family tributes from the nephews, and then we will have resolutions, acknowledgments and resolutions. The reading of the obituary that will be done silently has probably been done by most people prior to and so we will move through that very quickly and then we will actually have our eulogy by the Reverend Reginald L. Andrews Sr. I'm very honored to say that within our midst today that we have Commissioner John Wally Price. Will you do me a favor and stand sir that we might acknowledge your presence here today as we're very honored to have you in our service today. What an honor that you have chosen to come. Uh, I will have to tell you that as pastor of this church, I am a stickler for excellence, and I'm gonna have to tell you that there is a piece of paper that is down on that floor, and if we don't get that paper, 
off that floor. I'm gonna have to come out the pool pit and thank you and get it up. It just, that is this kind of stuff I can't deal with. Thank you for getting that up for me, sir. But that's just, I'm OCD and everything has to be done right at Shiloh and the members of the church know me. If I have a, if you were a member of this church, I could just give you a paper look and you'd already know something was on that floor when I give you that and you'd know, get that paper up off that floor. Thank you so very much for doing that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate that. So we will begin our program now with music. Shirley. Testament scripture, Psalms 27 and 1, said to be Rob's favorite scripture, and it reads, the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? New Testament scriptures found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of his spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. This is the word of the Lord. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we come with heavy hearts this morning, mourning the loss of a good brother, mourning the loss, Lord God, of a good friend, mourning the loss of a good husband, Morning, Lord God, the loss of a good uncle. Lord, we thank you for the life of Robert Orlando Andrews. Thank you, Lord God, for the lives that he touched while walking along this way in such a short amount of time. Lord, we thank you for all that he did, Lord God, in that amount of time. All all the things that he accomplished, Lord God, and we understand and know that it was only because of your grace and your mercy. Looking back over his life, Lord God, we thank you for the parents, Lord God, the family that you blessed him with. And Lord God, as we grieve today, Lord God, we understand and know that you do nothing wrong. All these things occur because of your will. And we pray now, Father God, that you help us to accept your will. Help us, Lord God, to keep Rob's memory alive each and every day. Lord God, the things that he said, the laughter, Lord God, all the wisdom that he shared, Lord God, with his players and with his coaches and his friends, Lord. We, we pray, Father God, that you help us to linger on that from this day forward. The legacy that he left is a great legacy. Now, Lord, we pray right now for Shayla. Pray, Lord God, that you strengthen her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, each and every day from this day forward, Lord God, give us strength to make it to the next. And Lord God, in the midnight hour, when her heart is missing her husband, Lord God, we pray right now that you give her strength and comfort as only you can. For we know you, God, to be the God of all comfort. Dry the tears, Lord God. And Help our Father God to be a witness to somebody else, some other wife that may have lost a husband, Lord God. Help us to be a witness to be able to say, God saw me through it and he'll do the same for you. Lord, we pray that as this day goes forward, that you strengthen us all. Our heart is broken. We're weak right now, Father God, but we understand and know that you do all things well. 
these blessings we ask in your darling son Jesus' name, the precious name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, the penetrating name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. This is a song that I want to dedicate to Shayla, to Sam, and to Ridge, to the rest of the family. It's a song that my daddy sang for years, Walk On By Faith. We cannot see in the future and we cannot see through dark clouds. We cannot see through our teardrops, but walk on by faith. Each day, walk on by faith. Each, each day, we cannot see through our teardrops. And it's hard to smile through our trials. We cannot see all our pitfalls, but walk on by faith. Each day, walk on by faith. Each, each day, on, on Monday, walk on, on. On Tuesday, walk on, oh, let Jesus, let Jesus be your guide, oh, he's able to carry the load, he can see way down the road walk on by faith each each day walk on by I'll say that one more time. On a Monday, walk on. On, on Tuesday, walk on. Oh, let Jesus, let Jesus be your God. Oh, he's able. I know he's able to carry the load. He can see way down the road. Walk on by faith each, each day. Walk on by faith 
Jesus is dead. I'm not as tall as Lou, so I need to let this up a, a little bit. Um, good morning, everyone. There's no need to be somber because if Rob was here, he would have cracked the joke by now. Um, probably at my expense. Um, I think he, well, we were in the hospital and one of his nurses came in and he asked the nurse, where was he from? And the nurse said, well, I'm from Puerto Rico. He said, man, I got a brother from Puerto Rico. I was like, okay, but well, I told him he was a little kid that the Dominican family left on our doorstep um, because he was supposed to be a girl, but we are thankful. First of all, Shayla, Pastor, bless you. Shayla, thank you for how you loved our brother. You are to be commended for that. Uh, you did a phenomenal job of being his wife. And I know Rob ain't the easiest to love because he's my brother, but you did a phenomenal job and we're grateful to that, to you for that. Um, I was sitting at our, we had a musical at our church on Saturday night and the lady was singing and I can't remember the song, uh, but at that moment I heard my mother's voice because I was wrestling with what to say. And she said, just tell them, grieve like you know who God is. Because oftentimes, and I think I, I have about eight minutes, right, Shayla? Um, oftentimes, we get so caught up in the moment that we forget who gave us the moment. Yeah, yeah. And God is able to handle whatever we go through. And if you don't believe me, look at Rob's life in these last few months. When he went, found out that he had to have surgery, a lot of us would have folded our tents, took our ball and went home. But Rob said, in thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. He put his faith in God because he believed that God would get him through. Whenever he needed a break from the tough times, he could turn over to Psalms 46 and say that God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. Whenever he needed some encouragement, he could say, turn over to Psalm 34 and says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall be in my mouth. And this is a moment where we ought to be praising because what Rob lived a life in his gregarious, sarcastic way that allows us to know that God is real. Because when he could have folded, when he could have quit, he kept on pushing through. If you saw him on Facebook when he gave his updates, he could have, even in the midst of his pain, he wanted to show us what God was able to do. And as we are going through our moments of pain, we have to remember what God can do. Because if he can do that for Rob, he can do that for us. And in his final moments, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff are with me. The reason is the rod was used to fend off the enemies. The staff was used to draw him closer. And while God fended off those final enemies, he used his staff to pull Rob a little bit closer to him. And we can rejoice that although he is no longer here with us, God has brought him closer to him. And he is no longer going through, but he has been healed and made whole. And if you are broken on this morning, take comfort in that fact that if I just get closer to God, God will heal me and make me whole. But if you're outside of the ark of safety, I encourage you to get close to God for yourself. Because there's a day that is coming where you have to stand before him. There's a story of a judge who was sitting in his chamber and a grandmother came in 
with her pastor begging for him to have some mercy on her grandson. Said, I, I know he's guilty. He deserves whatever is coming his way. I, I know he's guilty, but if you could just have some mercy on him. He deserves whatever is happening to him, but if you can have some mercy on him. And the judge says, well, if he gets to me, before I put on my robe, if he gets to me, before I grab, grab my gavel, if he gets to me, before the bailiff reads off the record, I can do something for him. If you haven't found out God for yourself, I encourage you on today that you get to him before everlasting late gets here. Get to him before he rings in time and brings in eternity and get your life together. Rob got to him. He got to him at St. John. He got to him on that Sunday morning when he was seven years old wearing that baby blue suit, yellow shirt, and floral tie that my mama made and sung, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Yeah. Write my name on the roll. Rob got to him, and he knew him for himself. And I encourage you that during these difficult times, get to God for yourself. Not just so you can ease your hurt, but just so you can have a guide to make it through life. Because these are not going to be the last moment that you hurt. But you always can know that you got a healer yeah. and you got somebody to help you to make it through. We're going to miss Rob. He finally forgave me after 40 years, Corey, for dunking on him and breaking his Dr. J gold. And to his former players, he didn't play defense either, so don't get mad. <laughs> he didn't play defense. But we're going to miss his spirit. But all of us have a memory of who Rob is. We've got a joke. we got something funny he said. we got some little nugget, some little moment of sarcasm that we can hold on to and remember him and cherish him forever. He loved his nephews. He was, in the, he was the uncle that everybody went to because he was the coach. He loved them and played video games with them to the point that sometimes it got a little physical in the room when they lost. <laughs> but that same love that he had for them, God has for us. And we just have to make sure that if we're going to honor Rob, we can honor him by living a life that pleases the God that he loved and that he served. God bless you.
I requested that Silva and Go be played at this service today as that was actually Rob's favorite song. I actually had a different musician that was playing. He had to go into the hospital. And so he called Miss Shirley and asked her to come and play. And I just went over and said, do you know that song? And she said, yeah, I'll go over to that organ and play it. And I think we ought to give her a hand because she just did that, amen, amen, amen. Let me say this to you. I want to say this to you that I uh, have, uh, you all were worshiping at our church before. I think you all may have moved to Austin before you moved to Austin. And I just want to say to you, as after having been your pastor, though I'm not programmed, I, I just want to say on behalf of the Shallow Church that I feel obligated to leave some words with you today. And, and they're very brief words that I want to leave with you. I, I just want to remind you and give you something as a family uh, to hold on to these preachers here. Sometimes you are the ones that are always pouring words out to other people, but sometimes you need words poured into you as well. And I want you to know that my family roots are actually from Opelousas, Louisiana. And being that they were from Opelousas, and we actually moved, uh, they moved to Houston uh, prior to my birth. Anything that happened in Opelousas, and they call, people would call back and tell my mother and father what had happened. My mother would look over at my father, and my father would look over at my mother, and they would just look at each other and say, now, now, now. And I often wondered why they would say now, now, now. Well, this coming Saturday, I'll be 72 years old, and at my age, we didn't get in grown folks' business back then and ask grown people why they said what they said. We stayed in children's places, unlike children today that ask you why you do what you do and why you say what you say we are. In. I lived in a different generation, so I decided, well, I won't ever ask them and so when once I got old enough that I thought I could ask them, they had passed away. So I thought I would just go ahead and get my own now, now, now. And being that my mother and my father were both rooted in the word, I thought I'd just go to the word and find my nows. And so I got my now, now, nows from the word of God. I got my first now when I went to Romans 8 and 1 and have found that it said there is therefore now no condemnation to those who walk after the flesh and not after the walk after the spirit and not after the flesh and somebody ought to say now i decided i needed to go and find me a next second now and i decided to go to second timothy 4 and 6 where paul writes to timothy and says look I am now ready to be offered for the time of my departure is at hand. Somebody ought to say now, now. Now, I decided I got to find my third now. I decided I would go traveling looking for my third now. I got all the way to revolution, Revelation. When I got to Revelation, I thought I can't get that far. I tripped and I fell back into the book of Jude. And when I fell back into the book of Jude, this was what I found. It says, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace. And now somebody ought to say, now, now, now. I got my own now now, 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 from the word of God. If you'll just hold on to your now, 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 God will keep you over in the midnight hour. God will keep you. Preachers, God will keep you when you're missing Rob. Just remember your now, now, now. There's no condemnation. The time will come when you too will be ready to be offered up. And when you're ready, you can 
say now unto him that's able, we use it as a benediction, but you'll be able to use it as an introduction into the pearly gates when you say now unto him that's able to keep me from falling and present me faultless. I'm not without fault, but I'm going to be presented as though I'm faultless. Let me tell you how, because you got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost working on your side. You got got the father you got the father working on your side the son working on your side and you got the holy ghost working on your side when you got the holy spirit as your judge when you got the son as your lawyer and you got god as 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 your final deciding maker your decision maker and you can just walk right on in as my associate sitting over there said there are 12 gates to this city that you're going to and my assistant stand up Raph I told Raph I said Raph there are 12 gates to the city Raph told me he said man I don't know if I'm gonna get into the north gate south gate east gate or west gate he said but they don't let me in one of them gates I'm hopping the fence as long as you get in that's all that matters somebody ought to give God praise today amen that Rob has made it in somebody ought to give God praise today if you will we have tributes coming from the Frisco ISD main of basketball team we have someone from Bastrop class of 94 94 94? 94. People, Lord, I, I've been teaching 20 some years at 94. Uh, and then I see brothers. Okay, we're ready for you. And you can do the lower level or the upper level. We're ready for you now. I'm Kelsey. I had the privilege of working with Rob when he came to open Lebanon Trail. And when Shayla asked me to speak, I wasn't sure how I could adequately encapsulate Coach Andrew at LT, or our friend Rob, better known as the GOAT. Since that is how he introduced himself at the beginning of every school year to all of his students. So I ask those that had the privilege of working with Rob for any stories or memories they wanted to share. And uh, there was a great outpouring of incredible memories. And there were three common themes. And that first one was his love of old school rap music, which he would play every morning in his classroom to start the day. And with our thin walls, the classes on either side, had the privilege of listening to Rob's playlist. <laughs> or there was that time at lunch when he did a vibe check to just see who knew the one and only correct way to respond when you heard the term regulators. <laughs> <laughs> that next common theme in all the stories was Rob's love of cooking where he would heat up his leftovers and our mouth would water at the smell and he'd give you that side eye when you went to heat up your frozen burrito <laughs> or how he taught me what I was doing wasn't actually a roux <laughs> and all the many hallway conversations in between classes that would inevitably end up Rob and Coach Carmichael bragging about what they had cooked over the weekend, trying to one-up each other. And that would eventually turn into a back and forth about the better golf scores or better golf courses. <clears throat> but the most prevalent 
theme in all of the stories was Rob's big heart. How he could just pop into your room, sit down and have a conversation, and make your day better. Or when you walked into his room, and he's holding a sleeping puppy, <laughs> and you could just feel the compassion and the willingness to help every single student who walked through his door. But that big heart was never more evident than when he talked about his family, what it was like growing up with so many brothers, or how Rob would describe it, being the favorite of so many sons. <laughs> how proud he was of all of his nephews and how excited he was for the newest nephews that always came with pictures and videos. But it was never more clear to all of us that that big heart belonged to his rib, Shayla. We will always miss him at LT. First of all, giving unto God, I'm the pastor of this house and the minister. Um, I'm Sad Jackson, and I'm the campus athletic coordinator and head football coach at Frisco Lebanon Trail High School. I met Rob 13-plus years ago, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but I just want to look around and look at this room and see how many people he touched. That's not only from his current life up here in Frisco, but from his life down in Austin and even his life prior to going to Austin here in Dallas. So with a Frisco Lebanon Trail family, please stand up. FISD family, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Now with his family from Maynor, Texas, Austin slash Austin, will you please stand up? Thank you guys for being here. A lot of coaches, a lot of players that Rob touched. It's funny, I was sitting here listening to him, um, to his brother talk. Um, I knew Rob was the youngest. And I knew Rob was the youngest of four boys. And it's amazing how our lives parallel so much because I'm the youngest of four boys as well. And uh, I too am my mama's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all could take that and run with it. <laughs> but old Rob, man, Rob had a way of touching. When I first met Rob, he was running up and down a basketball court in Maynard when I just was announced the head football coach and athletic director at Maynard High School. And he's like, Coach, you got next. I said, man, you know I can play basketball. He said, you better be able to play basketball if you're going to be around me. So we just had a few little old jokes that went in and out with Rob. Man, Rob was the guy that always had that funny, funny way of sarcasm, like his brother say. And it's funny, I would come home from work, and, and I hear my wife on the phone saying, shut up, Rob. Because she's on the phone going back and forth with Rob about something, and they just going at it. And it's just so funny to watch how they develop a brother sister relationship. Shayla, you're special. He talked about you all the time. You are his rib. Um, when Rob was getting sick, and he talked to me a lot about. His biggest worry was leaving his wife. Yeah. 
So, I know how much he cares for you. I know how much he loves you. Rob was special to me because, Rob, I worked longer with Rob than any other person in my life. I've been with him for 13 years. So he was more than just a colleague to me. He was my brother. And when I told Rob I was applying for the job up here at Frisco, and I asked him, I said, what you think? He said, let me know when we leave it. <laughs> he never hesitated. He was the only coach that came up here from the main or Austin area to Frisco Lebanon Trail with me. And he was faithful to his duties until the day he couldn't coach again, coach anymore. And he gave everything he had. He would sit in the gym and some of his players are here while his legs were ailing because he didn't want to miss practice. And he would sit and watch practice because that was what his love was. He loved sports just like that his obituary said. That's all he did, love sports. And he loved to cook. See, Rob, he gave me some pointers on some of that good old Louisiana cooking. Now, that was my taste tester. When I thought I could cook some dirty rice or some red beans and rice or some jambalaya or some gumbo, it didn't get the point of approval until I brought it to school and I said, hey, Rob, taste this. <laughs> and he'll taste it. he say, you on to something, coach. You all right. <laughs> so I felt good about it. Because Rob tasted my Louisiana, my attempt at a Louisiana cooking, and he approved, I felt good about it. Well, in my conclusion, I just want to say this is not easy to do. It's very difficult. Sam, Rich, I know what you're going through. I, too, have a family of four boys, and two of my brothers have gone home. So I know. So, man, if y'all ever need somebody to talk to, just to lean on me. Make sure you give me a call because I'll be doing the same for you guys. Because Rob was my lean brother. That was my brother in the nighttime when we win or lose a game, we stay up to 1 o'clock in the morning talking on the phone. That's Rob because he loved us. He loved you guys in Lebanon. He loved you guys at Maynard. And I appreciate everything y'all did to pour into his life. And we're going to miss it. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. That's not going to work if Anna Mae Andrews was here and she said good afternoon and y'all did that. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> That's much better, much better. Amen. First, give an honor to God and the minister of the pulpit and Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you for indulging us today. Um, you know, Rob was a man of, uh, was just a wonderful man, and you've heard some of the wonderful stories about him. Well, we possess a lot of the stories that can't be told in church, but we're going to give it our best. <laughs> So summer 88, or maybe 89, or was it wintertime? Never mind. Thank you all for giving us a chance to honor our brother Rob. The us I'm referring to is his brothers in the inner circle, or the IC for short. So the IC is a collection of brothers that you see here today, from the same place, similar backgrounds and beliefs, each striving to be the best men we can be. And if you agree on the old adage of steel sharpening steel, I just want to tell you a little bit about these brothers here. We've got engineers. We've got people that sell in academia and athletics. We've got government officials. So I say still sharper than still just to say that we've done okay for ourselves in this world. And Rob was a part of that as well. 
So, but that's not what makes us overcomers. You know, we didn't come from dirt poor backgrounds. None of us did. We didn't grow up in the hood, or at least what we know to be the hood. We are overcomers because of how often, you know, do you come across a group of black men that have been tight-knit for most of their lives, and the whole team is successful. And I don't mean rich. I mean in career, in family, in love, and more. And Rob was a, main, was a major part of that. I also think it's safe to say when you have a crew, each member kind of plays a role. You know, some play multiple roles, and often those roles are interchangeable amongst the crew. So you're going to have wisdom. You're going to have that comic relief. You're going to have leadership and more. But Rob was like the soul of the IC. So while the IC lost our soul, we did gain its spirit. And I speak for us all when I say this unbreakable bond will continue until our dying day. But there's no doubt those who knew and loved Rob are faced with immense sadness today. And it might be cold comfort, but we do find some comfort in knowing that while Rob couldn't necessarily choose good health, he was able to choose life. He was able to choose his path. And for that, we are happy for him. Now, if you know Rob, you know there are many things that he's passionate about. He's passionate about his family and friends. He's passionate about good food, especially if he cooks it, <laughs> because you could not tell him he wasn't the best. And one regret that I have is, brother, we, we never truly had that cook-off, but I still like my chances. <laughs> and I know the Texas folks in this room swear by your barbecue, but it was something magical about that Andrews pit, something magical about it. And if you walked in that house on Providence and Sugar Hill and that smoke was coming out of the pit, if you were offered food, no thank you was the wrong answer. <laughs> He's also very passionate about hip hop. You heard about some of the you know, uh, rap. And if you know Rob, you know that there's going to be plenty of outcasts and UGK dominating that playlist. And if we were talking about the best rappers alive, he would you know, never let that conversation go without speaking up for Andre 3000, who's a part of Outkast. And most of all, he was passionate about his wife. So I don't know if he typed a text to some girls that he used to see and let them know that he chose Shayla as a cutie pie with whom he chose to be. <laughs> but he did hit a home run. Because while we, while we put thought into what makes a good life mate, you know, you, you better make sure you have caregiver high on that list. <laughs> so sis, I'm not going to try to say that we know what you're going through, because truthfully, nobody does. My valley is not your valley. So if you feel like you want to shout, scream, laugh, cry with the world, whatever it may be, you've earned that. And you deserve to do that. We just want to say thank you for doing right by our brother and, and how much you poured into him and us. So very much thank you for that. I do have a little bit of advice for you, though. You know, you're going to be going through a journey, and there's going to be a lot of people around to lift you up and provide that support to you. We're always going to be here. Hopefully you have a local community here that's going to pour into you as well. But please do not, under any circumstances, let these Dallas folks turn you into a cowboy boy. <laughs> I also want to publicly acknowledge our brother Corey. Corey lives out here in, you know, in, in Dallas as well, and you know, we know, I want him to know how much we appreciate him and all that he did as well. Uh, you know, being the physically closest to Rob, um, you know, he got a chance to spend a lot more time than, than many of us did, and he also did a wonderful job in keeping us updated and just really appreciate how much he poured into that relationship as well. So one of my fondest memories of Rob, uh, and there's actually two, and one is if you're a golfer, you know there's no better thrill than a hole in one. And when Rob got his, the only one that I've ever witnessed, you would have you'd have sworn that all of us got that hole in one. But another memory, if you knew Rob, you know that for a large portion of his life, he walked with a pronounced limp. Well, I recall the first time I saw him after he had his corrective surgery to, to, to correct that limp. And you would swear, when, when Rob hopped out of that car, it was one of these. <laughs> okay. You know, another thing that makes us happy, though, um, is that his opportunity to be re reunited with his parents. I remember the impact, uh, you know, we, we all remember finally the impact that losing um, anime Piper Andrews had on Rob and, and, and his life. You know, we stood on the shoulders of giants. That, that Sugar Hill community was, you know, while I admired it from afar, I never felt like a visitor. And I, and I appreciate her um, and, and everyone else in that neighborhood for, for taking us in and really looking out for us. And, you know, Ampa, as we called her, was one of the most significant of those giants. So if we ever neglected our thought process, riding dirty, letting out a call to the wild at 3 in the morning, Reaching in the goodie bag and slip on some black ice and leaving the players ball, we knew when we got back, some of our parents might give us a pass. 
But when we got to anime, it was going to be a murder. <laughs> so on behalf of the IC, we bid our brother farewell. But we know it's not a goodbye. It's a until we meet again. We are forever thankful for the impact he has had and will continue to have on our lives. We give anything to hear that say, dog, one last time, but we cherish those memories, and we love you, Rob. Thank you. Um, I said, I told the fellas I wasn't going to sing that. <laughs> but uh, I feel a little remiss, because uh, those of you from, from Bastrop and Strop City, y'all all know me as, 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 as two. And if you know, you know, right? Um, but but I was the only child, and I grew up um, a block from Rob, and um, uh, I had two other brothers that that I grew up with, Robert Andrews and Adrian Barnett. And um, you know, I heard some people speaking about the good food that Rob cooked, but that what that didn't come from Rob. That came from John D. Andrews. <laughs> and I know every Saturday morning. If I looked through Ivory Smith Yard and I saw that pit smoking, it was going to be a good day. <laughs> but my only problem was getting my friends out to play because Adrian stayed in trouble and Rob took forever to get dressed. <laughs> I just didn't have no understanding. <laughs> so um, after negotiating with Adrian's parents to get him out and looking for mismatched shoes, and I don't know what the problem was, is his clothes were everywhere. I mean, the room, my God. But... Um, you know, we go outside and literally play basketball, football, baseball all day from the sun up to sundown. And I, and as walking home, you know, you know, Rob, Rob wasn't built like the rest of us. He was a little husky. And, and I, I'd wonder, like, how, how could he do it? I mean, I was like, well, maybe he has a, he has a, he has a good heart. And just sitting here reflecting on it, I mean, yeah, he, he had a good heart. He had a strong heart. Um, and and now he's leaving a piece of his heart with the world. And I love him. I'm going to miss him. Shayla, thank you so much for being there as brothers. And, and from all of us, we, we really only miss him. And I know that he's touched everybody in this room in some way. Thank you. Wow, the... make sure I'm right. Yes, while the nephews are coming, uh, the first brother who spoke, yeah, remain standing for a moment. As you were speaking, I'd asked these brothers just prior to you all coming up what I see stood for. And as you spoke, you said it was inner circle. And as you were talking, I actually thought it might have meant in Christ. That's actually what I thought it might have meant until you made that statement to Shayla about the cowboys. to do <laughs> with Christ. So Shayla, as pastor of this church, I must give you better advice than that and tell you that if you intend to see Jesus, you better follow the star. And I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Nephews, will you come? Good afternoon, everybody. I'll say this. I can say so many things right now. I was once told sometimes we're the only book you'll ever, people will ever read in life. And we've all been able to take a book, I mean, a page out of Uncle Rob's book, and 
whether it's just cooking, we can all go there. His coaching, his lessons. I can only imagine what it was like to be a fly on the wall during his lessons as a student. Um, I'll end with this, and uh, I'll say some people have to search their whole life to find a city where people love him, feel, you know, love. But everywhere he went, I can see he was loved. Um, that's a great thing. And uh, we actually was cooking not too long ago. And in his famous words, if you ain't sneezing, it ain't season. So. How you guys doing? I'm Levon. Um, they didn't get a chance to say it yet, but I'm pretty sure I was a favorite nephew. Um, Levon was, to me, more than an uncle. You know, uh, my dad's youngest brother, but kind of like my big brother. It was tough. It was real tough. But I found solace in these last weeks. You know, he was going through a pain that I really couldn't imagine. But he tough through it. And if there's a lesson that we can all take, it's keep going can. You know, I didn't know the story of him showing up to practice with his legs feeling as bad as they were. Now, I knew he was in pain, but for those kids that he was able to teach, I hope you guys took something from that. You know, while uh, his life ends, you guys, you know, it's, it's beginning. You know, there's, uh, there's just something special about somebody who can persevere through that. We all know people who've given up way too soon and didn't amount to what their potential was. You know, the kind of heart that he had, you know, while it did, you know, waver away towards the end, I believe he gave too much of it too quick. But that part on him will stay here with us as long as we allow it to. You know, I'm extremely grateful for all the lessons he was able to teach it, at least me. You know, I'm pretty sure Mike and Joe can say the same. I do wish Justin was here as well, because we were all close. But, you know, I've, I've shed my tears. You know, I've got my answers. And uh, again, I'm extremely grateful to have a man like Rob you know, uh, be a part of my life. So, thank you. You know, just good morning. Uh, I'm Joseph from Samsung. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was a favorite nephew. Uh, my uncle Rob got a big play on my life, especially with sports. Um, when I was a little kid, I used to go spend my whole summer with my uncle Rob. I was seven, eight, working out while high school, was going to practice with him, cooking with my uncle Rob. When he stayed in Maynard, that's how I got cool with Coach Chad and some of the other coaches. But that played a big part of my life. My uncle Rob was the first person that I played a video game with. When it was time for me to start, you know, in high school, start working out for real. I remember my freshman year, that's when he first came to Lebanon Trail. And he was like, I want you to come spend the summer with me and go to this program. I'm going to be there all day with you. I said, all right. It was a program called MJP. During the summertime, you know, as a little kid, you don't want to wake up early in the morning. My uncle Rod had me up every morning at 7 o'clock. He had breakfast ready, or if breakfast wasn't ready, we were stopping somewhere. Yeah, 
make me go to go to workouts. And after he'll be like, you tired yet? After that, he'll make me go in the gym with his basketball team and his other coaches. We'll play basketball all day till he was tired. And I started, you know what I'm saying, when I got older, that's when everything started happening. But I just want to say, Uncle Rob, I love you and I'm going to miss you. I'm not really scripted to say anything today, but I am part of the class of 1994, Bachelor High. And I am from Bachelor, Louisiana. And I, I've i been knowing Robert, um, excuse me if I'm getting this wrong, he went to H.P. Adams, right? I went to H.P. Adams as well. So I've been knowing him ever since elementary. All the way through high school, we graduated together. And he was a very intelligent, and smart man. And I'm talking about he was so smart. Forgive me for saying this, but I really wanted to cheat off of him on that ACT so I get a good score to go to college. I mean, he was so super smart. All of us wanted to cheat off of him. All of us was just like wanting to look over the shoulder and just look, look, just to get a good grade because he was so smart. But we all love Rob. He has such a good heart. And I would like to say, ask, I know I've seen two people here, but anybody else here from the Bachelor High School class of 1994, please stand up. Please stand up. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And my name is Yolanda Livingston. Good afternoon. On behalf of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, we want to offer this resolution for Robert O. Andrews, February the 28th, 2023. We, the members of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, Plano, Texas, extend to you our heartfelt sympathy in the loss of your loved one. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of your loved one. According to his tender mercy, God, who is infinite in his wisdom, makes no mistakes. God knows each of his children. He knows how much we can bear. Psalms 35 says, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We are placed in this world for a limited time. This world is not our home. We are just passing through on our way to our mansions that God has prepared for us. You can be assured that the Shiloh Baptist Church family is here to support and pray for you and your family during these difficult days. We know that God will ease the pain for you as the days go by. Therefore, be it resolved, although it's difficult today to see beyond the sorrow, may looking back in memory help comfort you tomorrow. God will surround you with precious memories of your dear loved one. God said in his word, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. Be it further resolved, although no words can really help to ease the loss you bear, just know that you are very close in every thought and prayer. I'm going to submit it this 20th day of February 2023. Lovingly submitted, Reverend Isaiah Joshua Jr. is our pastor, and he has a copy for the family. And as I come to present this resolution to you, I want you to know that encapsulated within this frame of the very words that come from our heart, it may look as though we just typed a few words on a piece of SNBC stationery, but such is not the case. Every word was thought out. We meant every word that we said. And we're not here today just for you, but anything that we can do for you or any of your family members, we're certainly here and we're standing ready to do it. 
anything we can do other than money. I don't have any money, but <laughs> anything else I can do for you, you just call on me and I'll try and do it for you. Prayer, counseling, anything. I, I'm just broke. Other than that, I can't. I, I, I just can't help you when it comes to money, amen? <laughs> and I don't have any uh, room on my credit card. So anything else, I'll be glad to do for you, amen? Blessings up on your shape of blessings. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. God bless you. <laughs> um, also, we were sent from the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education. Resolution in love and memory of Robert O. Andrews. And when great souls die, after a period, peace blooms, slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whispered to us. They exited, they exited, we can be, be and be better for they exited. Be it known that the board and entire membership of the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education acknowledge the passing of Brother Andrews, the beloved husband of state board member Shayla Andrews. We share in the pain, we share in the pain of saying farewell to one of our extended family members. Whereas the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education extends to you our prayers and sympathy in the loss of your beloved husband, Robert O. Andrews. Whereas we are comforted by the sacred scriptures which declare, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, as well as Paul's encouragement in his letter to the Corinthians. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education, join the family of our esteemed member, Shayla Andrews, in knowing that her beloved husband has found rest and peace with God. Be it further resolved that the board and the entire membership of the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education will lift up the Andrews family in prayer and also pray that the Holy Spirit which remains our comforter, will rest, rule, and abide with your family during this time. I'm going to submit it to 27th day of February 2023 by the Texas Association of Black Personnel in Higher Education. Also, I have one other resolution to the family in remembrance of Robert Orlando Andrews. Occasions such as this usually generate feelings of ambivalence. Feelings of sadness mingle with joyous reflections of the privilege of having known Robert Orlando Andrews. Leaves us all emotionally exhausted and questioning God. You may ask why he was taken so young. Only God knows the reason we must endure obstacles and requires us to remain faithful during trying times. Use this time to reflect on the joy you gain from having Robert Orlando Andrews with you for this time. Resolve to continue and trust that God, who sent his son to die so that we might live, would never leave you lost or alone in his beloved world. You have, you have my unyielding sympathy and the support as you say farewell to Robert Orlando Andrews. I pray that you are cloaked by God's grace, mercy, and peace, and allow his love to fill any void you experience now and forever. John Wiley Price, Dallas Com County Commissioner, District 3. To the pastors, Pastor Jeff, uh, pulpit guests, members of Shiloh Baptist Church, to the family and friends of Robert Orlando Andrews, I am Stephanie Wiggins. I am 
the favored sister of Shayla Onita Mickens Andrews. I was asked to read the resolutions for May. United States of America, State of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, Governor, official statement in the name and by the authority of the state of Louisiana, I, John Bell Edwards, together with the citizens of this great state, do hereby honor the memory of Robert Orlando Andrews in acknowledgement of life well lived as a loving husband, brother, and friend to many. He will be remembered for the tremendous impact he made on many lives as a dedicated educator. He was a member of many organizations, including the Mu Sigma Honor Society. He will always be admired for his many gifts and his unyielding devotion to his family, community, and church. January 15, 1976, February 18, 2023. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand officially and cause to do affix to the great seal of the state of Louisiana at the Capitol in the city of Baton Rouge on this 28th day of February, A.D. 2023, Governor John Bell Edwards. Resolution. A resolution to express a heartfelt condolences upon the passing of Robert Orlando Andrews, whereas it is with great sorrow that pa the passing of Robert Orlando Andrews on Saturday, February 18th, 2023, has been learned, and whereas Robert Orlando Andrews was born on January 15th, 1976, in Bastrop, Louisiana, to the late John Dewey Andrews Sr. and Anna Mae Piper Andrews, and whereas Robert was, Rob, excuse me, as affectionately known, had a strong and unshakable faith in God, at an early age confessed his love for Jesus Christ and was baptized at St. John Missionary Baptist Church and Bastrop under the care of Pastor William D. Simmons, whereas throughout his youth, he faithfully served his church as a youth usher and sang in the choir, and whereas Rob graduated from Bastrop High School, where he served as the class president and was a member of Mu Sigma Honor Society, the band and the orchestra, and whereas outside of school, he was an active member of the Monroe Youth Symphony and a champion shower at the Southern University Livestock Show. And whereas Rob was honor an honor graduate of Grambling State University, where he earned his Bachelor's of Science in secondary education, and whereas he was an effective educator, has taught in several independent school districts in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and a successful basketball coach who led his team in the Manor, in, to, excuse me, independent school district to become district champions during the 2011-2012 season and regional semifinalists during 2013-2014 season. And whereas Ra was a sports fanatic, skilled musician, a great chef, he loved playing golf with his brothers, especially on their annual guys trip, going to the movies and spending time with his nephews and great nephews. And whereas he leaves behind to cherish his memory, his wife of 16 years, Mrs. Shayla O. Andrews, brothers, Pastor Reginald L. Andrews, Sr., Andrea Denise, Pastor Samuel M. Andrews, Katrina, mother-in-law, Mrs. Mary Mickens, brother-in-law, Henry L. Mickens, Jr., Michelle, sister-in-law, Stephanie Mickens, and five nephews, one niece, two great nephews, and a host of God children and other relatives and friends. Therefore, 
be it resolved that since the, the sincere heart felt condolences are expressed to the family of Robert Orlando Andrews upon the occasion of his death, Senator Katrina Jackson, District 34. The Greater New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, 3920 East Rosedale Street, Fort Worth, Texas, 76105. Reverend Reginald Andrews, pastor, teacher, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there laid upon me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all also that love his appearing. Second Timothy Chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Whereas God has called Mr. Orlando Andrews from his home, dear family, on Saturday, February 18th, from labor to reward, to a land far fairer than ours, a land where there's no pain, no suffering, and no tears. The home going of your husband, brother, uncle, and loved one is the will of God, and yet... There is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. Cast your burdens on him, for earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 and 18. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of Greater New Hope Missionary Baptist Church family, desire to, to express our love to Pastor Reginald and First Lady Andrea Andrews and the entire family in the time of bereavement. Resolved. Humbly submitted, Reverend Reginald Andrews, Pastor, Sister Juanita McMerriam, Secretary. One more. Resolution. We are today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelations 21, verse 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Commemorating the life of Robert O. Andrews, whereas we, the Mickens family of Greensboro, Alabama, have a prize of the passing of our beloved family member, Robert O. Andrews, and whereas it is pleased, Almighty God, to take upon himself our beloved Rob too soon by our measure, but in the providence of all the all-knowing divine. And whereas in God's holy wisdom, he has called Rob to dwell with him in the glories of paradise, the Mickens family offer their sincere condolences to Shayla and the family. Your sorrow is our sorrow. Your loss is magnified by the loss of a dear soul from our family. And whereas our cherished Rob shared the fruits of his labor as love and devoted husband to his wife and successful person in life itself. And whereas Rob performed his work on this earth and offered his service to all needed it, especially his family. He was a loving and, attent and an attentive person who instilled in his family a strong devotion to the Lord and a sense of responsibility to those less unfortunate. And whereas we have strongly persevered from, from each of us, that we have been blessed by the presence of Rob in our lives. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace bereaved Shayla and the family, and our common bond of grief and remembrance of our beloved soul. 
And therefore, be it resolved, we bow in acceptance of the perfection of God's plan to gather each of us unto his merciful arms when we have fulfilled our task on earth. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. Therefore, excuse me, that where I am, you may be also. Be at peace in the everlasting love of the Lord. Respectfully submitted on the 28th day of February, 2023, on the behalf of the Mickens family, Dayton Mickens, Kimberly Skipper, we love you, Shayla. May his peace be with you till we meet again. May his peace be with you till we meet again. Till we reach that distant shore and we shed a tear no more. May he give you strength to endure till we meet again, till we meet again. Amen. 
Amen. Again, I want to, <clears throat> on behalf of the family, thank all of you for your shared love, respect for our dear brother Robert, who's a husband, friend to a lot, to many as well. I, uh, many people that grew up with Robert didn't know I existed. Because way back when he was born, I was a junior in high school. Soon after, I matriculated to college, and I never went back home to stay. But as he was born, we had a store. And I chose, instead of working in that store on Sunday morning, I chose to babysit Robert on the weekends. He was a brother like no other. But the one thing that grew with us is that our relationship changed from big brother to like a father-son. And I enjoyed that more when he called me and asked me for my advice. That it made me feel like I knew something if nobody else did. We're gonna miss him, but he will be all right and we will see him again. Amen? Now, there are four quarters in a high school basketball game. Each one has eight minutes, right? Which totals 32 minutes. And if there's an overtime, there's added time. We won't get but one quarter in with me, and we'll be done. Won't be long. But in the book of the letter to Timothy, many people have already read it in the tributes, mention it as well. Second Timothy, fourth chapter. And we'll look at that. But I want to say as well to Pastor Joshua and the Shiloh Church, there were 10 lepers that came across Jesus who asked for mercy. One came back and said, thank you. Jesus made him whole. Don't know how many people the Shiloh Church has helped, but for one thing we want to say, thank you for what you've done for us today. <laughs> Second Timothy 4, 6 and 8. It reads, for I'm now ready to be offered up. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. And not only me, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I was watching a basketball game, and it got towards the end of the game, and the game was tied up. And the coach called his final timeout. And I want to talk to you today about the final timeout. Right. In this, the letter to Timothy, Paul took some time to write, took a time out. But we have to understand that during this time in the life that we live and the choices that Robert made, he was in full control of everything. Even in his relationship 
with Christ. He was in control. At the age of six, he told mom that he wanted to be baptized, and she said, you need to go talk to daddy, your daddy. So I was home from college, and when he went to talk to him, my dad said, I don't think you're old enough. You need to wait. Come Sunday morning, Rob said, I'm old enough. I'm not going to wait. He was in full control. In his time to go into heaven, we wanted him to wait. But Rob said, I'm now ready. He says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. You see, we, we, we don't know the pain that he went through because we didn't feel the pain. But he endured the pain like a good soldier. And so he was able to tell us that I'm now ready to get to that point. What he said is, I fought a good fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul made this declaration, and he said, in a bit of reflecting on his life, I fought a good fight. Yeah. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. He says, I fought a good fight. He did not mean, Paul's, did not mean that he had always fought at his best or that his ministry had always been at peak performance. The word good does not describe the manner of fighting, but it describes the fight itself. That it was a good fight. A good fight. He says that what he did was, I gave it my all. I have no more else to give. But the fight itself for Paul, it was a warfare in which God's people also are engaged is a good one because victory is assured. Yeah, yeah. No earthly general, however convinced though he or she might be of the ability and proficiency of their troops could ever say, go forth to battle, troops, but have no fear. You've already won. But to the Christian, God says, go forth to battle, you've already won. No matter what you may go through, no matter the pain you may go through, no matter the difficulty you may go through, no matter the deterioration of your body, you've already won the fight. I just need you to wake up every morning, no matter how you feel, and give it all you got. You see, you can only fight a good fight if you give it all you got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, he said, I finished my course. Paul was not saying that he had done everything perfectly and without flaw. Every single thing that was included in God's will for his life and ministry. He's not saying that, though he was a giant among servants. Paul was still subject to the frailties of humanity. And he would have been the first to admit he was. But what he was saying was that God has set out a course for his people. And his desire is to leave them here until they finish it. They will not perform it perfectly, but the key is they will finish it. They will finish it. You're not going to do everything correctly. But the thing that you need to do is what you start, you need to finish. What Rob started, God made sure he could finish. But the thing that you have to understand is not only you have to fight a good fight, not only you got to finish, you've got to keep the faith. You see, by this Paul was meant that he had guarded the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word. 
He had not let his emotions run away with his common sense and with the spiritual discernment God had given him to comprehend and apply God's word to his life. Rob faced his challenge with faith. With faith. With faith. Didn't know what the end was going to bring. But he did trust in God. He didn't know how long he had. But as long as he had time, he knew who to trust. He kept the faith. You see, in 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, five times I received, right, 40 lashes minus one. And if you weren't good in math, that's 39. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. In my frequent journeys, I have been in danger from rivers and from bandits, in danger from my countrymen and from the Gentiles, in danger in the city and in the country, in danger on the sea and among false brothers, in labor and toil and often without sleep, in hunger and thirst, often without food and in cold and exposure. But I kept the faith. I kept the faith. And I want to challenge you today that no matter what's going on in your life, you got to keep the faith. Not to say every day is going to be a good day, but you got to understand that you got to keep the faith. If it was going to be easy, God would have chosen somebody else. If it was going to be a smooth slide downhill all day long, he would have chosen somebody else. But he chose you, and you need to keep the faith. When everything that Rob did, not his cooking, not his basketball, not his golf, not in social studies and history, nothing could do that for him. The only thing that he had that he could hold on to that would get him over was his faith. The only thing that he had that would never fade away was his word of the Lord. You see, he won numerous awards as a young man. He went to college and didn't pay a dime. Mine, that's why mom and dad loved him so. You want to be the favorite child? Get a free education. You want to be the favorite child, get a free education. And I challenge the students that he taught to do that best you can always. If you don't, you're leaving something on the table. Rob didn't leave anything on the table. He got it all, and he shared that with his students and his players to give your very best. And what are you looking for when it's all said and done? We here on earth, we establish greatness in the things that we can collect. We establish being rich in the things that we can show off. We establish success in things that we can accumulate. The houses we live, the cars we drive the clothes we wear. You see, my best pair of pants, I didn't get at Dillard's, Neiman Marcus, or Saks. The best pair of pants I got, I got at Costco for $19.99. You see, I don't worry about accumulating things. The only thing that I want is what Paul looked to have, and he wanted a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. That's what waited for him. Finally, he says, with thrilling overtones, a glorious fact, henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not only to me, 
but to everyone, everyone who believes, who everyone who also love his appearing, who's righteous. No, Paul wasn't righteous. It wasn't his righteousness. It's the righteousness of Jesus. The righteousness of Jesus. I'm working on the two-minute clock here. I'm almost done. You see, Paul would have been the first to say this, that in me there is no good thing. He would have agreed fully with the prophet who said, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Thus, the crown the believer will receive in heaven is the crown of Christ's righteousness, which we receive not because of our goodness, but because of the unmerited grace of the Almighty God. You see, I'm working on a one minute, 30 second clock now. We can all see that Paul wrote to young Timothy about his anticipated home going. And it's not so illustrious and dignified a testimony for Paul that it's only reserved for him. You too, I too, like Paul, ought to be able to write an illustrious ending to my life. You should be able to write an illustrious ending to your life. You can only do that if you have a relationship with the Savior. You have to know him for yourself. You see, again, everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and that has conquered and overcome the world. Our continued persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God. There is a heavenly reward for us all. A heavenly reward. But we don't know when. We don't know where. But when that day comes, you too, like Paul, need to be in control and aware that I've fought a good fight that I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. During Rob's final days, that we had conversation with him. Sheila, the good woman, good wife. We went in on Tuesday, two weeks ago, and talking with the doctor. And the doctor was talking to him about what they were going to do to ensure he had the best care while he was there. And she got to a point that Rob just kind of shut down, wouldn't talk. I didn't realize it then, but I realize it now. He called time out. He called time out. He called time out. He said, enough of this talk. He called time out. He didn't want to talk anymore. Shayla and I and Denise told the doctor he's done talking for today. It's time out. So time out on Tuesday. Here comes Wednesday morning. And Rob said, I've been up all night long. He called time out. 
just as the coach would call timeout to go over the strategy. He had to go over the strategy. And he realized then what was ahead and what he could do. And he called a prayer meeting all night long. He talked to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. And he had dealing in that meeting him, the carnal Rob. But he also had his spirit, and they had a meeting. And in that meeting, what took place there was Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. You got a way out, Rob. And he said, what you going to do now? He said, I tell you what, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. His fourth now is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. No more fighting. Victory is won. And how did he know the victory was won? He said, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we make groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with the, our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that being clothed, we shall be fa not found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, do groan. Being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up life. Now we that have wrought us for the self-same thing is God. He has, who also hath given us unto us the earnest of the Spirit. But he closes out with this. Therefore, we're always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Victory is assured. And so what did he do? Fellas, he said, ball is mine. Is mine. He said, when the clock starts, I got the last shot. And he said, what are you going to do? He said, I got this. He hit a fadeaway three and closed it out. Game over. Final timeout. Bless you, man. Bless you. Bless you. Let me say, my brothers and sisters, whereas death has once more invaded our ranks and removed from this walk of life, our beloved brother Robert Orlando Andrews, his soul having departed to dwell in the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, it has become our sad duty to commit his body to the grave, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, and our inspiring privilege to commit his soul to our maker our Father and our Redeemer, and we do so in the confident hope of the coming again of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the body from the grave, and the joyous life reserved for the children of life in the realms of glory, the peace of God, 
which passeth all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Now unto our God and to our Father be glory forever and forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Shall we stand? Thank you. 